we talked about this part here, which is really important for fluidic adrenergic, right? To see that the neuron can release either two neurotransmitters, which is either acetylcholine and norepinephrine. That's all two neurotransmitters that function in the peripheral nervous system. And the receptors that receive it are either cholinergic or acetylcholine, and adrenergic or norepinephrine. And also you have the, the postsynaptic cell can either be a gland or a muscle that's getting the information. And if we're talking about the skeletal cell or, or muscle or, or the striated muscle, the same meaning, there's, this is called the neuromuscular junction. And you said that, that it's nicotinic muscular, that's, that's the receptor that's there. So we talked about this chart. And we said that the CNS will give order to the cell. So we'll go to the transmission, will go through a neuron, and then it will release acetylcholine, and the receptor here will be nicotinic. This is called ganglion. So this is the ganglion. And then the, the action potential will continue, and then we'll release a neurotransmitter. Depending on the type of fiber, if it's parasympathetic, it's going to release acetylcholine. If it's sympathetic, it's going to release. And depending on that, you have a bunch of receptors on the cell to receive the, the, the certain neurotransmitter. Okay, so we said here, we said that both the parasympathetic and the sympathetic system, the ganglion is the same. So the ganglion is always, the language that's spoken there is always acetylcholine to nicotine, always. And we put a little M because we wanted to, to differentiate it from the, the striated or the skeletal muscle. So if the heart, if we're trying to get to, let's say, a gland, right, and you want to secrete the gland, what secretes gland? Which, which scarinic receptors do we have? Which receptors do we have to stimulate to secrete glands? Scarinic, okay, so. So the gland, if you want to secrete from the gland, the parasympathetic is going to work. This is going to start working. And then you're going to release acetylcholine at the end to stimulate the scarinic receptor of the gland. And in that way, it will secrete saliva, right? Or whatever it is it secretes. If the sympathetic is working, it's going to go through this process. And then at the end, it's going to release norepinephrine. And it's going to stimulate one of these on the gland. And then it's going to not secrete. Okay? And we said the, all glands in the body, which receptor do they have? mainly that controls our stimulation, yes. muscarinic. So all glands in the body will secrete by stimulating muscarinic receptors. Almost all glands in the body will secrete stimulated from the parasympathetic system, except sweat glands. So sweat glands is the only one that's connected to the sympathetic nervous system. Because you want sweat glands to work when you're the sympathetic, when you're exercising, right? Not when you're sitting down, relaxed, and eating. Right? So you want these to work with the sympathetic. Mm -hmm. However, the glands do not compromise. They do not compromise their receptors. They said they have a little pack that we will all use muscarina. So that means the sympathetic system said, fine, I'll use acetylcholine just for you. But just be part of my system. Okay? And even though the sympathetic usually uses norepinephrine, but only in this case, fine, I'll use acetylcholine just for you. Okay? And we said the sympathetic, which adrenal, oh man, I'm just messing all around. <laughs> which endocrine gland is attached directly or controlled directly to the, uh, the nervous system? Adrenal gland. <laughs> which part of the adrenal gland? Uh -huh. Aha. Oh, medulla. Medulla, right? So the adrenal medulla is actually controlled by the sympathetic. So it will go acetylcholine. Norepinephrine, there's no second neuron, it's the gland right away, and bam, epinephrine will be released in the body. Why? We don't want to wait. Epinephrine is an emergency thing. We don't have time to wait for a hormone to be made from the hypothalamus that will be made from the thyroid, then, uh, sorry, from the pituitary, then it goes into the blood. We don't have time for that in an emergency. We want it to be stimulated directly with a neuron that will come and release our epinephrine when we need it, right? And then we have the alpha motor neuron that doesn't have the ganglion goes directly to the skeletal muscle, right? And there we have acetylcholine and nicotine. We put M for nicotinic muscle to differentiate it from ganglions. Okay? All right, so from that we said we concluded 
that norepinephrine, we said, that stimulates alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1. And epinephrine stimulates all four adrenergic receptors. So adrenergic receptors are four, alpha 1, alpha 2, and beta 1, beta 2. We said alpha 1 mainly on? Arterials. Beta 1 on the heart, right? So if you draw the beta sideways, and how many hearts do you have? One. So one beta 1 is on the heart. Beta 2? Lungs. And alpha 2? Stop. Stop button, right? So it shuts down the, the system, the, norm, the energetic stimulation. Okay. So if you have a, someone has an anaphylaxis reaction, they're having difficulty breathing, and we want the lungs to expand, can we give norepinephrine or epinephrine? Can we give both? Which one? Epinephrine. Epinephrine, because epinephrine stimulates beta 2, and norepinephrine doesn't. Okay. 